Hello YouTube, I'm Todd Macon. This is Film Camera Obsession and today I would like to introduce you to my favorite 35mm camera of all time. My favorite 35mm camera is not my Leica M2, it's not my Nikon F2, nor is it my Canon A1, my Minolta, or any number of cameras that I've played with. Nope, it is the very humble, the very wonderful, the very lovely Kodak Retina 3C. Let's check out why. All right, before we jump into the wonderful qualities of the Kodak Retina 3C, I just want to say that I'm proud that I've hit my 500th subscriber, Sid, with two Ds, in India, sends his love. Thank you, Sid. And you should join Sid by hitting subscribe below here and leave me a comment. I think we're off and running. Anyways, subscribe. Thanks, Sid, with two Ds. First of all, I know, it's a Kodak. And that doesn't come with a lot of props because Kodak kicked out so many cameras and production was just moving and moving and moving. But this Kodak, the Retina series, was made in Germany by German engineers and it rivals a lot of other German cameras. So I love this camera for three main reasons. But first, a little bit of its history. Retinas go all the way back to 1932. That's a long history. And the design was by a man named August Nagel, who helped start Zeiss Icon. That's some chops. Nagel left Zeiss Icon and started his own company, Nagel Camera Works. And at some point, Kodak came over to Germany and bought Nagel out. But he continued to design cameras, especially small cameras. His goal was to make a camera that would take a 35 millimeter canister that was disposable and usable in every camera. We still use those today. I think you know what they look like. So I also own this Kodak Retina 2, which is from 1937 to 1939, and this Kodak Retina 1B, which is from 1957 to 1960. I think it's cool when I come across an old camera. This one was given to me, and it's got its original case with it. I like this one a lot because it's leather and brass. Feels like the camera Indiana Jones would probably be using when he's ripping off a temple and shooting 35 millimeter photos to document it. And then there is the Kodak Retina 3C, which is also from 1957 to 1960. And this was the highest end of the Retina series, and it was the last folding Kodak Retina. Kind of makes it sought after. In all honesty, I prefer this little Retina 3C to the Leicas that I've owned and shot. The Leicas are great cameras. I do enjoy shooting them and I enjoy their history. But if I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna stick something in my bag and hopefully come across something interesting, it's gonna be this retina. So why do I love this little camera? Well, three reasons. First one is its ergonomics. Really, I enjoy holding this camera more than any other camera I think I've ever owned. There's something about the curved front door and its width that fits perfectly in the palm of my hands. And then my fingers wrap around the front and I feel I have a really good grip on it. It's also a really nice compact size. You can fit this into most pockets. A little uncomfortable, but it fits. And here's its size versus the Leica M2. It's a little bit taller than the M2, but it's not nearly as long. The other thing is that there's a super funky film advance level down here at the bottom. 
As you know, most 35mm cameras, the thumb advance level is at the top here with your right hand thumb. But this, you slide down and it's almost like you take your middle finger and you just wind this guy around. <laughs> I love that. Let's do it again. Yeah, maybe they're doing it just to be different, but it doesn't matter. It works and it's neat and it's kind of fun. And actually I do find it's just like a, this a smooth motion. Not quite as awkward as moving your thumb to the outside. You kind of use your palm. That. The second reason that I love this little camera is the superior lens and glass that's on it. Now some might argue with me because the lenses are a little bit different, but the glass really is superior. It's a Schneider Krugschnack Retina Xenon, and it, this one is the 50mm f2.0. Now unlike Leica, and this is where Leica maybe has an edge up on this, is you can exchange lenses pretty neatly, whether it's the screw-ins or the bayonets. Now the lenses on the retina are clear and lovely and there's something about the sharpness and still the kind of silkiness about the images I get from this camera. Now technically you can change out the lenses on this. In fact, there are three lenses that you can move to. There's a 50 millimeter, which is the lens that can't, comes with the camera. In fact, it should have the same serial number as the body. But with a quick turn to the left, you can pop that lens out and it is tiny. It is so small. The other lenses that you can put on the Retina 3C are the 80 millimeter and a 35 millimeter. Now I don't own the 35mm lens yet, but I was lucky enough <laughs> to be given a box of Minolta cameras and this retina lens just happened to be jammed in the lower corner of the box. So it fits on the front, like so. Look at that. I think it looks cool. The other reason I love these cameras is it's really unbelievable price point for a vintage, high quality 35 millimeter camera. Right now on eBay, you can purchase a Kodak Retina 3C with a little C for $150 and the big C, and we'll get into the differences here in a little bit, for $300. That's fantastic when you're comparing it to a Leica M3, which is gonna run you a good couple grand. This difference in price point is what leads some people to call the Kodak Retina 3C the poor man's Leica. But I feel that anyone who owns it isn't poor at all. It's a great, fantastic camera and a bargain for the price. If you do buy one though, keep an eye out. The film advance winder often uh, is broken. And I'm gonna get to that in a, in a second about where and how to get your Kodak Retina repaired. So the difference between the Kodak 3 with a big C and the Kodak 3 with a little C, not much and yet one is double the price of the other. Really what it boils down to is the viewfinder. Inside the viewfinder of the little C, you have just one frame line for the 50 millimeter lens. For the big C, such as this, you have a frame line for the 80 millimeter and the 35 millimeter. Also, there's a little bit of difference in the light meter, which is on the front here, the selenium light meter. Um, one is a dual range, the little C, and then the big C is a single range light meter. And I'll get to how to use that in a second. But other than that, that's it. An extra $150 for a few frame lines and really what's a fantastic uh, viewfinder on both cameras. The lenses are the same, the shutter is the same, the guts are the same, really not different. So there's no shame at all in getting a little C. In fact, I'd probably recommend it. 
So a few quirks about shooting the Retina 3C other than having the film winder down on the bottom of the camera as opposed to the top. I think one of the things that throws people off when they're shooting the Retina is that it's designed to use an EV or exposure value number versus kind of looking at the f-stop and shutter speed. You can still control the exposure by looking at the f-stop and the shutter speed, but that's not really how the mechanism works. The mechanism works with this little tab at the bottom and once you go ahead and line up your camera, the light meter will put a white line in this little window right here. Then you line up an arrow with the window and it gives you the exposure value based on the f-stop you're on and your ISO. In this case, it's at a 13. So then you take the tab and you move it to the number 13. The other important quirk is setting the counter back to zero. Once this camera counts down to the last shot, it locks. So there's a, little, uh, there's a little slider on the back and you have to move this lock and slide it in order to move that counter forward. That's really it. Other than that, it's a really easy camera to load. You can open the back by moving this little thing sideways and pushing on a release button. This is a very easy camera to load. I've never had a problem putting film in here at all and nothing's ever been jammed. It's fantastic. At this point, I really wanna thank Chris Sherlock who lives in New Zealand and I'm gonna put a link to his website down below and maybe even a couple of his videos here on YouTube. Chris must be the most generous person in the world. He knows seemingly everything there is to know about Kodak Retina 3Cs. If you're willing to ship it to New Zealand, Chris does do retina repairs. But Chris, out of the goodness of his heart, has also put up on his website descriptions on how to repair your Kodak Retina. In fact, Chris, you saved my butt because my exposure value tab here got loose and was just sliding all the way around. I was able to use your website to figure out how to fix the camera myself. And even though I ran into a small problem, I was able to use your videos to figure out that problem, and I did it. Works great. You're the best, Chris. Thank you. Also, anything else you'd like to know about the Kodak Retina is down below there in Chris's website. He's fantastic. Check him out. I have a feeling he's very busy as these cameras get more popular. So that's it. I love my Kodak Retina. And if I'm going to grab any 35 millimeter camera and just throw it in my bag, it is this camera. I love the images I get. I love carrying it. And people think it looks cool, which it does. Very affordable, wonderful 35 millimeter rangefinder camera. I'd recommend looking for one, or at least keeping your eye out for one. They're around. I'm Todd Macon. This is Film Camera Obsession. Stay tuned for my next video on the website that I've just made for myself, as well as finally getting out and shooting my 1924 Graflex. Thanks a lot. Please leave a comment below. Hit subscribe. Share me with others. Keep on shooting. Okay. Just can't stop opening and closing this camera. I'm going to be careful. <laughs>